This is Richard from Modern Health Span. First, a quick disclaimer that in this newsletter series, we are presenting longevity news items that we found of interest. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. First, we would like to give a shout out to our supporters who are very generous to buy us some coffees. It encourages us to continue to share information on aging research. Thank you so much for your support. In today's newsletter, we will talk about the results from the first NMN clinical trial on efficacy, which was conducted by Washington University and whose results were published two days ago. Let's have a look at the trial and the accompanying paper. The paper came to the attention of Dr. David Sinclair and he sent this tweet about it. Here is the paper. Let's have a look at the trial first. The trial is the effect of NMN on cardiometabolic functions. The study is looking at how NMN helps with cardiovascular and metabolic functions, specifically those that are important risk factors for diabetes and cardiovascular disease. In this case, they are looking at how NMN helps with insulin control of blood sugar. They looked at a panel of other markers such as blood lipids and body fat as well. It was an interventional, randomized, placebo-controlled, double-blinded trial. There were 25 participants, 13 of them on NMN and 12 taking the placebo. The intervention was to take 250 milligrams of NMN a day for at least 8 weeks. The trial actually lasted for 10 weeks. They performed a number of tests which improved the NMN group but not the placebo group. And their conclusion was that NMN increases muscle insulin sensitivity, insulin signaling and remodeling for the participant group. Our next item is from the University of Sao Paulo, where they have developed a proof of concept for a mechanism to produce transplantable livers in the lab. The way they do this is through decellularization and recellularization. In this process, an organ from a donor is treated in a way to remove all the cells and just leave the extracellular matrix with the organ's original structure and shape. The matrix can then be seeded with the patient's cells and regrown, which avoids the immune system reacting. This not only avoids the risk of rejection, but also the need for the patient to take immune-suppressing drugs, which open them up to other infections and often have negative side effects. So this process will lead to both lifespan and health span extension. As a proof of concept, they used a rat liver. They seeded it with a human-induced pluripotent stem cells produced by reprogramming adult skin cells. In the environment where they were placed, these, these differentiate into liver cells and repopulate the liver. So the patient will get a new reconditioned liver with no concern of rejection. Given the number of people waiting for transplants and the difficulty in finding a compatible donor, this is really interesting proof of concept. The University of Cambridge has announced that they have used cryomicroscopy to map the structure of human telomerase at the atomic level. As a quick reminder, telomeres are the caps at the end of chromosomes and they get shorter with every cell division. Telomerase is the protein that rebuilds telomeres and so allows the cell to continue to divide. In humans, telomerase mutations are linked to premature aging diseases in which telomerase functions are decreased. The hope is that through this high resolution structure we can understand the molecular pathology of these genetic diseases. On the other hand, upregulation of telomerase can lead to cancer where cells replicate indefinitely. Currently there is no telomerase based therapies, however this atomic model provides a framework for them to be developed. Some interesting basic research given that telomere shortening is one of the hallmarks of ageing. And the last one for today. Acetylated tau inhibits chaperone mediated autophagy and promotes tau pathology propagation in mice. We recently had an interview with Professor Cuervo, one of the key authors on this paper, and talked about autophagy in general and chaperone mediated autophagy in particular. Please do watch that video series if you would like to know more. Tau is a protein that occurs in the brain and when its homeostasis is disrupted it can lead to neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's. The acetylization of soluble tau is an early sign of this. In the healthy case tau is degraded by chaperone mediated autophagy but when it is acetylated it is degraded by macroautophagy. Acetylated tau seems to inhibit CMA. And this seems to cause propagation of the pathogenic tau to other cells.
and we see similar features in humans with this disease. The conclusion is that the failure of CMA is part of the process that leads to tauopathies, such as Alzheimer's, and could aggravate disease progression. Hopefully this gives us an opportunity to identify the issue early and resolve it. I do hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.